Hello and welcome back to the studio. Uh, it's Thursday and today I'm wrapping up the uh, bits and pieces of the uh, White Willow song, Red Leaves, that I've been working on for a while, but not constantly, of course. And there's this little middle section where I, on purpose, play very, very little. And the idea for that was that I'll sort it out later. But the idea was fairly um, directed towards uh, a special good friend of mine, the uh, the Square Wave Parade Teaspoon. I thought, if I play very little and then use the teaspoon, I can create something that would be interesting and nice. So, uh, and the section is... Sounds like this. The idea, of course, is that I play fairly simple and we're just moving accents around. So the actual drum thing is this. Once again, I have no idea what, if there's actually a time signature involved in that. But what I did was that I started messing around with the um, with the mid-fi electronics. No, the uh, sorry, the uh, teaspoon, and it just actually went. Guk, 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 guk. But the funny thing was that it just became noise. And if you think about the music that was that was playing, it's fairly. Uh, harmonic and nice and kind of builds up to this big section so uh, what I did was that I, I tried taking the uh, the teaspoon out through the, uh, the stereo springy reverb over there and then take that through a compressor to and then flip that backwards sounds like a good idea right well what happened was that uh, the teaspoon still sounded kind of annoying, but the spring reverb sounded great. So this is the, yes, the spring reverb. And it becomes this effect that there's an effect sound going on. So I realized oh, that's great. And I but I wanted to set a tempo. Uh, I want to try to use the instead of using the, the teaspoon, I want to use the um, wow, that's my hand. It looks all dead, like dead, dead mixer hand. Uh. And um, just trying the uh, pitch shift delay to get like a tempo delay instead. And it sounded fairly bad. But what I did was I took the uh, the click track, and I do this all the time when I set tempo delays, I just get the click track up and I set the tempo, the delay to the to the click track because then it's gonna work, right? So. And it goes clonk, clonk, and a clonk. And then there's another clonk at the end of that. But I try that, and then what I realized is, aha! The click track sounds great through these effects. So it's about almost like using the, the uh, is it called scaffolding? Yeah, as the, as the main building. I don't know. Uh, but this is what it sounds like. If I can get it to work. Which is great, it gives it a real good um, 
I don't know, kind of a, a really cool, slightly distorted, but very rhythmic thing going on. Well, it's the click track, for God's sake. But, uh, but then I tried doing, uh, using the, uh, the pitch shift delay instead, and I tried doing some reverse effects. So I recorded it, and then I took the actual bar that I recorded, and flipped that backwards, and this is what I got. So with the click track and the uh, reverb, it goes, sounds like this. Put the and the fun thing, of course, is that the first fill is the best, so you can hear it, and it should be like and a two, and a three, and a four. And so that... I started out with a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do and then messed about and had like the the end effect is pretty much what I wanted to achieve but it took me a lot of I had to take a long route around to find it and uh, I think I'm pleased I'm not really the good thing about it is that all these different little building blocks can be used each one they don't depend on each other to work um, but I think it sounds pretty, pretty great. So let's, I think we should finish at the shrine as well. And there we go, yes.